sounded beautiful because we don't always have a full house. So this this is wonderful. Thank you. Before I call the meeting to order, I'd like to note we have an interpretation services for this meeting. The interpreter for this evening is Mrs. Viagrana and she, there she is in the back. And so if anyone needs a, a listening device and you would like to have one, you can contact Mrs. Viagrana in the, in the back. Antes de llamar a la Junta a orden, me gustaría notar que contamos con servicios de interpretación para esta Junta. La intérprete es de esta tarde es la señora Villagrana. I'd like to call this meeting to order for the City Council meeting of July 18th, 2023. Madam Clerk, could you please make an announcement about accessing the meetings and call the roll. Madam Mayor, due to technical difficulties, we will not have our Zoom stream available tonight. The live stream is available via the city's agenda portal at cityofsantamaria.org, the city's YouTube channel, uh, or channel 23. We apologize for this inconvenience. We did have one registrant already um, registered for the Zoom uh, link, and she, her name was Isela Aumanda, and she was uh, wanted to congratulate our new fire chief, Bradley Dandridge. Oh, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Aguilera Hernandez. Here. Councilmember Cordero. Councilmember Escobedo. Here. Councilmember Soto. Here. Madam Mayor Patino. Here. First item on the agenda this evening is the introduction and swearing in of the incoming fire chief, Bradley Dandridge. I will administer the ceremony of, of oath of office, office followed by the badge pinning of the fire chief by his father, Mr. Arthur Dandridge. Mr. Stilwell, would you first like to make the introductions before we begin? Sure, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm, I'm pleased to introduce Brad Dandridge as our new fire chief for the city of Santa Maria. A little bit about Brad. He uh, previously served 17 years with the city of Fresno Fire Department. <laughs> and is a graduate of Santa Maria High School, earning his bachelor's degree also in business administration from Cal Poly. He began his career with Santa Maria on, in, on January of this year and was named interim chief and became uh, chief in July here. And you know, this is an important time for the fire department. There's a number of changes underway that have been going on with the community's growth and with our efforts to continue to uh, move the city smarter and safer and, and forward to better serve the community. And it's important for us to have an exceptional leader like Brad here at the helm to assure the department continues to focus on best serving the community, standardizing operations and leading and supporting the professional staff as we continue to provide our highest quality service. So I'm pleased uh, that we're able to recognize Brad tonight and um, his wife, Melanie, is here, and uh, son, Elijah, daughter, Alexa, and as you mentioned, Madam Mayor, his uh, father, Arthur, will be doing the badge pinning tonight. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear or I affirm. Do. I do solemnly swear and confirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. About which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Fire Chief Dandridge. Thank you.
Madam Mayor, if you don't mind, I'm going to take an opportunity just to say a couple of thank yous um, while I have this opportunity. I want to first thank you, Madam Mayor, City Council, City Manager Jason Stilwell, for entrusting me with this position, um, allowing me to continue the work that we've been doing the last five months. I look forward to continuing uh, the work that we've done as a fire department to provide for the citizens of this beautiful city. I also want to thank the department directors. You have welcomed me with open arms and made this transition very easy. You've always been there whenever I needed anything, and you've been an easy one phone call away, and you've always never hesitated to help me out. Thank you very much. I want to thank my wife, Melanie. You've been the glue for your sacrifices that you've made, the commitment that you've had for our family, and the support that you've given me throughout these years. As I said, you're the glue to our family. You've allowed me the opportunity to pursue my different careers. The sacrifices that you've made have allowed me to be in this position that I am today, culminating where you see me standing today as the fire chief. Thank you, and I love you. <laughs> to my children, one of them who couldn't be here today, she's hmm. out of state, but she said she'll be watching on Zoom. But. Uh, <laughs> That's not going to happen, I guess. But thank you for being here. Thank you for being great children. Life is hard. Life will throw out you challenges. Keep working hard. Keep working. Keep being good people. Good things happen. Strive for the stars. You have no limits. To my mom and dad, what can I say there? Thank you for instilling me a work ethic from the time that I was young to always strive to be the best I could possibly be. You were my mentors. You were my people that I looked up to. You instilled in us that example that was easy to follow. Thank you for being here. My brother and sister and their families, thank you for making the drive to be part of this very special day. I'm going to look at my notes real quick because I don't want to leave anyone out. <laughs> I know who's next. My family here in um, Santa Maria, thank you for the hospitality and giving me the opportunity and a room for me to stay during this interim. I told you when they make it official, I'll give you that room back. <laughs> well, it's official, it's time for me to give you that room back. And two more, Madam Mayor, if I may. Uh, oh, absolutely. You have 25 minutes. So. 25 minutes. <laughs> That's all we got. To my Fresno Fire family, you see them in the back over there. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for coming over here and our support. I joined the fire service 17 years ago with no knowledge of the fire service. You instilled in me a foundation built in me the skills needed to be able to advance in my career. Thank you for your teamwork, trust, and commitment. And thank you for showing me what it means to protect and put service above all else. And lastly, thank you for your continued support being here on this very special day. And lastly, my new Santa Maria Fire family, you don't see them here, but they're in the back outside. There's not enough room with our great hometown heroes being honored today as well. To my new Santa Maria Fire family, I want to say thank you for your welcome. Thank you for welcoming me in as the interim chief. I commend your commitment, your dedication to the city of Santa Maria, and I look forward to continuing building the relationships with each and every single one of you. City Manager Stillwell said it best. Let's work smart together, continue to uh, make this place a safe uh, place for the residents of this community. So thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank you, City Manager, for this opportunity. And thank you, everyone, for allowing me this opportunity to speak. You have a wonderful night. On that note, Madam Mayor, I think I'm going to vacate. I'll allow opportunity to get people out and we can go. Yeah. So thank you very much. And thank all of you from Fresno for coming over to our good, great weather. <laughs>
the banners were uh, pre-hung this year. We had a little bit of advance time, so they went up uh, on, uh, excuse me, on College Drive uh, back in uh, the early part of the month. So we're uh, happy to say if you want to see a banner that we mentioned tonight, they're already up. So I'd like to begin by introducing our first hometown hero. Uh, assisting me in handing out the certificates tonight, uh, the mayor and uh, Dennis Smitherman, our recreation division manager. We're gonna start with a name that's very familiar, familiar to me, uh, Mike Miranda. Mike Miranda was a member of the Santa Maria Police Department and he's being recognized as a first responder. And he's being, uh, was nominated by Christina Casp Caspitron. Mike, did he make it? There he is. Yes, photo ops, come on up to the rail here. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you for your service. Next, we'd like to recognize Richard Lance Parker from the National Guard. <laughs> Mr. Parker was nominated by Gregory Parker. Thank you for your service, Mr. Parker. I'd like to recognize Lisa Adams in the essential workers category of education. Thank you. Next, uh, essential worker, uh, Amy Argentieri. Um, is she here tonight? We weren't sure if she was gonna make it. Yes? Yes, there she is. Hi, Amy, come on up. Also, uh, essential worker in education. Thank you. Leo Avala, essential worker, education. Is Leo here? Thank you. Ginny Bartnett, essential worker, education. Yes, come on now. We want to thank uh, Kenny Klein for nominating the uh, four education essential workers. Thank you very much for that nomination. 
Uh, next, I'd like to introduce another name that's pretty familiar to me, Mr. Ralph Castillo. A Marine Corps veteran, retired firefighter, a retired Rec and Parks employee too. I just want to point that out. Uh, and he was nominated by Michael Castillo. Ralph, good to see you. Uh, next, I would like to uh, introduce Mr. Uh, Henry Thomas Davis, a U.S. Air Force uh, a Bronze Star awardee, and he's nominated by Joanna Davis. Okay. Um, next, we'd like to nominate, or we'd like to recognize Mr. David Flores. Uh, U.S. Army, and he was nominated by Molly Schiff. Is David here? <laughs> Next, I'd like to uh, nominate, or rather, <laughs> recognize Mark Shane Jensen, Marine Corps. He was nominated by Linda Torres. Um, Unfortunately, Mr. Jensen has passed. He passed on January 21st of uh, 2021. And we hope somebody's here to receive his recognition. Yes? Okay, come on up. Next, uh, Kevin Kolkoff, uh, Essential Worker Education. Is uh, Kevin here? Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll make sure that all those that aren't present get their certificate. Uh, next, we have uh, Jennifer Montanez, Essential Worker Education. <laughs> Special thanks to Kenny Klein for making these nominations. Next, uh, we have Tony Murillo, Navy and firefighter, nominated by Tony Murillo Jr. Mr. Murillo passed on November 21st, 2022. Next, I'd like to have Nathan Resendez, U.S. Marine Corps, nominated by Susan Resendez. Come on up. I can get closer, get closer. <laughs> Hope one more. <laughs> Next, Stephen J. Robbins, uh, U.S. Army, nominated by Susan Carnell. Uh, Mr. Robbins passed on August 18th, 2005. Thank you. Next, we'd like to recognize Joe Rodriguez, U.S. Army, nominated by Jesse Rodriguez. Mr. Rodriguez passed on December 31st, 2009. 
Next, we'd like to recognize Clifford Lewis Tenori, U.S. Army. He was the awarded two bronze stars. You'll see him up on his banner. He was nominated by Susan Hale. Mr. Tenori passed in January 1914. Next, Essential Worker Education, Patricia Villalobos. Thank you. Our final recognition tonight is for Julian E. White IV, U.S. Navy firefighter. He's nominated by Julianne Powell. Mr. White passed on December 30th, 2016. Is there, there families here? Great. Madam Mayor, we want to thank the families for taking the time to make these nominations to commemorate their heroes. Uh, we are getting ready to accept nominations for our winter class of 2024. Those banners will go up uh, in the January timeframe. So if anybody is interested, you can contact the Recreation and Parks Department. Uh, for more information, you can go to the city's website and look for Hometown the Heroes. Thank you again for taking the time to recognize these important members of the community. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Casado. And thank you to all the hometown heroes and the families, because we don't forget. Okay. 
he's going to close the door. Oh. Next, we have a retirement resolution, and Council Member Aguilera Hernandez will be making the presentation. So Tim McNulty began a lifelong career with the City of Santa Maria in 1990 in the Water Division of the Public Works Department, which later branched off as part of the Utilities Department. So the City would like to do a resolution of the City Council of Santa Maria commending Water Systems Operator to Thomas Tim McNulty for 33 years of exemplary service. Whereas Thomas Tim McNulty has been a valuable member of the City of Santa Maria since 1990, and whereas Mr. McNulty became the second certified water system operator in the city's history, and whereas Mr. McNulty provided over 33 years of service in the Public Works Department and later the Utilities Department, and whereas during his tenure, Mr. McNulty helped facilitate operations for the city to receive state water developed and implemented the flushing program at the blending and disinfecting facility and participated in and witnessed new potable water wells drilled and reservoirs built to preserve and protect the city's water supplies while accommodating growth of the community. And whereas Mr. McNulty retired on June 2nd, 2023, and the Santa Maria City Council wishes to recognize him for his lasting contributions to the community, now, therefore, it is hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Santa Maria as follows. Thomas Tim McNulty is hereby recognized and commended for his 33 years of exemplary service to the residents and businesses in Santa Maria, and we wish him and his family well in all their future endeavors. Passed and adopted at a regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Santa Maria, California, held this 18th day of July, 2023. And is, wait, 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 is that a motion? Yes. I'll okay. second. And second, okay. <laughs> Madam, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Council Member Aguilera Hernandez? Aye. Council Member Escobedo? A very easy yes. Council Member Soto? Aye. And Madam Mayor Patino? Aye. Congratulations. <laughs> Tim, you, ha you have to give us a 20-minute speech now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank my wife and family who supported me throughout my entire career, being on call a lot, Chad. Chad. <laughs> uh, Chad. Responding at nights, weekends, holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, you name it through emergencies. They all supported me. My daughters would come to work with me on occasion. Chad, you didn't hear that. Um, just, you know, just not an emergency situation. And over the years, working with all the departments and divisions of the city has been an honor. Being a steward with local SEIU and president as well, working with Jason and several other city managers throughout the year opened my eyes to what it takes to get things done in the city. And it's a lot. It takes, um, it takes everybody, literally, to get everything done every single day. And I didn't realize that until we started working with other divisions, departments, city administration, negotiating contracts over the years. It's a big deal. And I wouldn't be here without the support of every single employer I worked with or knew that supported everything that the city does every single day. And I truly appreciate that, and, and that's what I want to take away in retiring with the city of Santa Maria. Thank you.
If I may, Madam Mayor. Yes, you uh, may. I guess I'll take director's privilege. Thank you, Tim. We appreciate it. The resolution speaks to it, but when I came to utilities nine years ago, um, one thing that I could always count on was you, steady and true. Going all the way back to the 90s, drilling wells, blinging in state water. As you mentioned, you were on call nights, weekends. I thank you for your commitment to the city and what you've done for us. Steady and true all the way through, and what you did was a big deal. 33 years is a serious commitment. I thank you, and I appreciate it. I, I don't think people realize that you're like a first responder, and people expect that, you know, when they turn that faucet that the water is going to come on and, and the kind of water they want and the quality of water. So thank you very much for, for your service for 33 years. You don't look much older than 33, Tim, so I don't know why you're retiring so know. young. <laughs> well, neither is mine. So, but thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda this evening is a presentation of the Businesses of the Month, and Council Member Escobedo and I will be presenting the certificates along with the Chamber, CEO Glenn Morris. Oh, Glenn is not here, it's Suzanne. Suzanne. Good. Good evening, Mayor and Council and City staff. Yes, you get me instead of Glenn. Sorry. He's on vacation. You know, the man has to take a break every once in a while. He's spending it with his family this week, so we're filling in for him. Um, we are always extremely excited and honored to partner with the city on things like this where we get to recognize business of the month. So we have two featured businesses this month, and I'll just introduce one at a time, and then you guys can do your picture thing, and we'll go to the next one. Um, this business has been serving our community for 53 years with over 100 employees, and they serve in the prevention of childhood trauma, healing children and families, and building resiliency in the community. <laughs> Calm is being recognized today for their mark in the community and their mission. Shelby is here and Ashlyn to accept the award. if I didn't take this opportunity. Um, thank you so much to the City Council and to the Chamber of Commerce for this wonderful recognition. I'm honored to be here representing CALM and our mission to prevent childhood trauma. CALM has found such a welcome home and community over the last 53 years, and particularly here in Santa Maria. And we look forward to our future, strengthening our community and our families all together. Thank you. Thank you. Next business we're featuring has been in our community for 57 years. Um, their legacy and tradition is feeding our community great Mexican food. They're third generation operated um, and they're continuing to grow. They're trying new things. They rallied around COVID and did some amazing things, gathered themselves a mobile food truck, took on catering, have done a lot of things to shift and change with the times, and that's why they're gonna be here another probably 57 years if they have it their way and they pass it on children after children. They're very engaged and involved in our community, and she's a current member of our Chamber Board of Directors. Maya is being recognized tonight for their contributions to our community, and Terry is here to accept the award.
Thank you, City Council, and thank you for the Chamber of Santa Maria. It has been a pleasure uh, being a part of this community. Um, growing in this community has been awesome to witness and experience, especially seeing that our own city and town has grown to the number where it's at right now and continue to grow. So as she said, I'm planning to stay here and hopefully my kids will take over. I am the third generation and my, my children are the fourth, so, and they're on their way. I hope to serve you guys some more and uh, come and eat some yummy tacos. <laughs> and award-winning menu though too. <laughs> Next, we have a proclamation, and Council, Mer Council Member Soto will be making the presentation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this proclamation is in honor of Pride Month, which took place in the month of June. Whereas the city of Santa Maria has a diverse lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community, and is committed to supporting visibility, dignity, and equity for all people. And whereas many residents who contribute to the enrichment of Santa Maria are part of the LGBTQ plus community. And whereas significant advancements have been made with the respect to equitable treatment of LGBTQ plus persons throughout the nation and around the world. And it is important for cities like Santa Maria to stand up and show support for residents of the LGBTQ plus community. And whereas June is recognized as LGBTQ plus Pride Month in many city, cities across the United States and has become a symbolic month in which the LGBTQ plus community and its supporters come together in various celebrations of pride to commemorate the Stonewall riots and when LGBTQ plus people rose up and fought against discriminate, discriminatory criminal laws that have since been declare, un, declared unconstitutional. And whereas in the movement towards equal rights for the LGBTQ plus community, the city celebrates their resilience and their hard won victories, hard won victories to advance acceptance and equality. Now, therefore, Alice Patino, mayor of the city of Santa Maria, hereby recognizes the month of June 2023 as Pride Month in the city of Santa Maria and urges all residents and businesses to respect the entire community and build a culture that strives for equity and equality for all people. And here to accept the proclamation is Anais Diaz, Vice President of House of Pride and Equality. Mayor Patino, City Council and City staff and uh, folks that are in the audience. It's very, very important that we do proclamations like this because we know what has happened in our country from time to time, and including in this year. And we were fortunate to partner with the um, Fair Park this year to hold our first outdoor pride since the pandemic. And we're gonna be back there next year, even bigger. So at this point in time, June 9th, if all of you would like to put it on your calendar, we'd love to see you there as we celebrate the contributions to our community from the LGBTQ plus community itself. Your uh, uh, willingness to do this and make this proclamation recognizes the contributions, recognizes the people who live here, who work here, and who support um, the great city that we get a chance to live in. So on behalf of the House of Pride and Equality Board, I'm the board secretary. We really thank you for taking this time to uh, make the proclamation. It extends Pride Month into July, which is even better. <laughs> but like I say, hopefully next year on July 9th at the Fair Park here in our great city, where we're going to continue to partner with them, we'll get a chance to see you at an even bigger and better Pride celebration. Yeah, nice. yep. good. Okay, I guess thank we're good. Thank you. The next item on the agenda this evening is the public comment period. Madam Clerk, could you please read the criteria for the public comment portion of the agenda? This time is reserved to accept comments from the public on consent agenda items, closed session items, or matters not on the printed agenda this evening. 
Uh, unless otherwise directed by the mayor, speakers will have three minutes to comment. Direction to staff may be given. However, state law does not allow action to be taken on matters not on the printed agenda. Once the public comment period commences, no other speakers will be allowed to submit a request to speak form or... Thank you. I have one request to speak and Mr. Hall. Good evening, Mr. Hall. Good evening. I guess I cleared the place for you. You're welcome. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Mayor, council members, staff, and citizens of Santa Maria. My name is Gary Hall. I'm a resident of Rancho Buena Vista Mobile Estates at 2135 North Railroad Avenue here in Santa Maria. I represent the North Santa Barbara County Mobile Homeowners Team, or NSBIT. I am speaking tonight to once again ask the city of Santa Maria to join over 100 other California jurisdictions that have provided their mobile home park residents with protection from excessive rent increases and in that way helped maintain affordable housing for their senior and low income citizens. Yesterday, I met briefly with California Assembly member Greg Hart on the sidewalk out in front of City Hall. I told him we are simply trying to catch up with what has already been achieved in Santa Barbara City and Santa Barbara County. It's now been one year and six weeks since council members Soto, Escobedo, and Cordero passed the motion to examine the model lease agreement, looking for ways to improve it and to look at alternatives. Unfortunately, that work remains undone. Meetings have been, have been held and some progress has been made, but far too little. No results have been officially announced regarding the June 20 meeting with the, that the city representatives held with park owners. Another city representative meeting is now scheduled for Friday, July 21st, with us, the mobile home resident res representatives. We hope to learn that our issues and proposed solutions which we submitted last January, have finally found some traction, and if not, it must surely be time to look at alternatives. Alternatives that will help achieve our overall goal, which you have all heard me read many times before, and it remains to provide protection to all Santa Maria mobile home residents presently living in an unregulated rental market where the current model lease program has been ineffective in protecting homeowner equity and maintaining affordable mobile home housing. For over five years, that's been our goal, and we continue to believe, given your collective political will, it is achievable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Uh, before we move on, Mr. Stilwell, did you wish to make any comments? Sure, thank you, Madam Mayor. A couple of comments. As, as Mr. Hall just alluded to, we have a meeting scheduled on Friday. We are, are looking forward to that. It seems that there's been a lot of progress in the interim on some key points that we'll be able to um, work with them on on Friday. So we look forward to that. And also, um, I've, we've heard a lot of comments off agenda about the fireworks. And so I can give an update on fireworks at this point if you if that would be something of interest, okay? That would be great, thank sure. you. So I can um, introduce uh, Battalion Chief Clayton to start with a discussion of what our efforts were this year. Good evening, Chief Clayton. Madam Mayor, Council Members. Deputy, Deputy Chief. Deputy Chief, okay. <clears throat> That's okay. Just, I just wanna provide a quick update of July 4th activities. Our goal has been to educate and deter the use of illegal fireworks. Uh, we worked with city staff, Astrid, uh, especially to develop a public safety uh, campaign in both English and Spanish and inform the public um, about the, the dangers and the use of illegal fireworks in the city and that we will contract with an aircraft to patrol the city in an effort to gain video evidence and could result in fines up to $1,000. <clears throat> this was distributed throughout social media and uh, the company did come, we did get a little fog uh, 
later in the evening, but they were able to uh, patrol the city. The overwatch operation identified 12 to 15 solid citations with a possible six to eight additional citations that will be determined with the help of the city attorney's office. Prevention officers, and I have uh, Fire Marshal James Austin here as well, uh, also made a presence on the 4th of July inspecting the safe and sane fireworks and uh, no violations uh, were found and the booths were professionally ran. Uh, the prevention officers also identified an additional 11 potential illegal firework violations and we are working on pursuing those citations. Emergency response on the 4th of July, the fire department responded to 41 emergency calls for service. Nine of the calls were fire related, including four outside fires and five dumpster fires. No significant structure fires were reported due to fireworks. Plans for the future include uh, continued education, development of PSAs, and uh, to also employ the uh, aircraft next year uh, in an effort to make the city safe by curtailing cur um, illegal fireworks. Any questions? Mr. Escobedo. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can, can you repeat how many citations uh, we had? Is that before uh, July 4th? 4th July, sorry. These were on July or, 4th? Okay. Yes, so the aircraft identified 12 to 15, we believe, or we can justify citations and an additional six to eight that are still under review um, for, um, through the city attorney's office to see if we can pursue those citations. And then the prevention officers also had 11 citations that they're feel confident. And then I know the police department was out in force and I'm not sure how many, uh, Chief Schneider. 14 through the police department, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I've got that, I add that, that adds up to 48. Okay, on the, the 12 to 15, you said solid citations. Yeah. How do you, I, I can't remember, how, you, how did you word that again? Uh, we identified 12 <coughs> to 15, we believe are solid uh, okay. citations. And we, so what is the translation then for solid? <laughs> Defer to the city attorney. Madam Mayor, where we have an, a, a, a clear um, sighting of an individual with a property address that we can identify as opposed okay. to one where we're trying to uh, either put a property address together or put an individual in, in placement. Some of these are video evidence and so my office is going through and seeing if we can meet the burden of proof before a citation uh, would be justified. So what happens when the person, say, any street is out in the street but you can't necessarily see them out doing fireworks out in the street. If we don't have a, a affirmative evidence, we would not issue citations because we want citations to be a deterrent. And the purpose to do it is to cite and convict, not simply to issue okay. things. And the other reason is we're trying to create a baseline. So if next year uh, those same houses uh, or same individuals are found to be cited again, that we would be looking at multiple violations at that point. So that's the reason to create also a baseline. Okay, and some people have said, okay, why don't you, you need to charge more than $1,000. So can you comment on that? The, the limitation okay. is that beyond that, you get into a misdemeanor and they would be entitled to both uh, criminal um, representation and otherwise we can do it at, at, at $1,000 an administrative site and we short circuit the process and we create, again, a baseline of citations rather than getting it into a criminal system where it tends to just linger. We want to actually make the citations a deterrent and collect the money. And the DA would have to make that determination if, we, if he was going or, to cite. Or, ha or have them defer it to my office, and we have not had those discussions. So we're trying to do it effectively, okay. and we're trying to also maximize the deterrent value for next year. Thank you. Any other questions here? Okay, thank you. Thank you. And let's see, okay, uh, moving on to the next item is the consent calendar. Madam Clerk, could you please read the description? Routine items are presented for city council approval without discussion as a single agenda item in order to expedite the meeting. The consent calendar is approved by roll call vote with one motion. These items are discussed only on the request of council members. Does anyone have anything that they wish to pull for discussion? 
Okay. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar. Any discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Council Member Aguilera Hernandez? Aye. Council Member Escobedo? Aye. Council Member Soto? Aye. Madam Mayor Patino? Aye. Okay, moving on. Next, we have the annual July appointments. Madam Clerk, could you please read the title? The City Council will consider making appointments to the Block Grants Advisory Committee, the Library, Library Board of Trustees, the Santa Barbara County Library Advisory Committee, and a staff alternative rep alternate representative to the Central Coast Community Energy Operations Board. These seem to sneak up on us every year, don't they? It's sort of like Christmas. We know it comes, you know, December 25th, and these always come in July. <laughs> but I love Christmas. Uh, well, yeah, I know, but <laughs> it's just always sort of, sort of a surprise. Yes. Um, do we have any requests to speak or written correspondence? We do not. Okay. So you want to continue with staff report? Uh, Madam Mayor and members of the City Council, the request before you tonight is to make various appointments mm -hmm. to the boards and committees just mentioned. I will present the boards one at a time for consideration of the appointments and the Council's ratification. The Block Grants Advisory Committee has six vacancies at this time. Staff received applications from two incumbents, Esther Acosta, previously nominated by Council, Med Council Member Escobedo, and Isaac Berhuman, uh, previously nominated by Council Member Cordero. Two new applications were received by Mackenzie Greeley and Sally Lopez. The appointees will serve a term of three years, each ending in July 2026. Uh, each member has a nomination, each council member has a nomination to fill on this committee. However, at a minimum, two vacancies will remain after this evening. Council member Soto has an additional nomination to fill for the unexpired term ending in July 2025. Following the nominations, appointments will then be confirmed by the mayor with ratification by city council and staff will continue to advertise for the unfilled vacancies. Thank you. Okay, let's, um, let's uh, Mr. Escobedo, can we, you want to start with you? Do you want to renominate? I, I do not have a nomination. Oh, you do not have a nomination? No. Okay. Mrs. Hernandez? I would like to nominate Sally Lopez. Okay. Does that need a second? Yeah. Oh, I'll second. Okay. Are we doing I'll, I'll yeah. Take yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Madam Mayor, Soto? I'll defer until August for my okay. appointment. Okay, um, I will go ahead and, no and nominate Mackenzie Greeley. Um, I hey. have a question. Sure. Um, did I understand correctly that incumbents Isaac Beruman and who was the other incumbent? Esther Acosta. Esther Acosta both submitted reapplications. Yes, they did. Yes. So, if Mr. Escobedo does not appoint them, are those are, are those applicants up for grabs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Able to nominate yes. Them? yes. 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 Yeah. yeah the, the short, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The short answer is yes. Um, the little longer answer is we will bring this item back on the August meeting. Um, with the deferrals we heard from council tonight, plus council member Cordero can't make his appointment at this point. Okay. So you can, they're, they're up, quote up for grabs now or at the next meeting if Got there's it. still applicants. Yeah. Thank you. I was gonna go ahead and nominate that for Mr. Cordero, but should we wait for Mr. Cordero? Could you, could you give you authority? Huh? Yeah, I have authority. Um, okay, so we have uh, Sally Lopez and we have Mackenzie Greeley. And I have a motion. Second. And a second. <laughs> okay. Sorry, who is the second? Carlos. Okay. Escobedo. Okay, any discussion? I, I accept these nominations and there's no further discussion. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Council Member Aguilera Hernandez? Aye. Council Member Escobedo? Aye. Council Member Soto? Madam Mayor Pacino. Aye. Madam Clerk, can you continue? Uh, there's one expiring term on the Library Board of Trustees. Incumbent Laura Selkin has reapplied. This vacancy has a new term ending in July 2026. Uh, one new application was received from Mary Lynn Stovall. 
Uh, the mayor will make the appointment with ratification by the city council. Okay. How many members are on that board? Refresh my memory. Are there five on the library board? There are five? Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, I will nominate Laura Selkin. I will appoint her. And um, do, I, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Council Member Escobedo? Aye. Council Member Soto? Aye. Uh, Council Member Aguilar Hernandez? Aye. Madam Mayor Pacino? Aye. Uh, Go ahead. There is one expiring term on the Santa Barbara Library Advisory Committee. Incumbent Betty Gunn has reapplied. No other applications were received. The mayor will make the appointment with ratification by the city council. Okay, I am, I'll make a motion to appoint Betty Gunn to the Library Board of Trustees. I'll second. second. Okay, is a second. Any discussion? Oh. Okay. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Council Member, Court, uh, council member uh, Aguilar Hernandez? Aye. Council Member Escobedo? Aye. Council Member Soto? Aye. Madam Mayor Patino? Aye. Madam Clerk, please continue. There has been a request from the Central Coast Community Energy staff to assign an alternate member to the Operations Board. City staff recommends that Assistant City Manager Andrew Hackelman be appointed as the alternate member. The mayor will make the appointment with ratification by the City Council. Uh, and before considering the last appointment, I just wanted to state that the remaining vacancies on the Block Grants Advisory Committee, along with the two uh, expired terms, on the Measure Use Citizens Oversight Committee will continue to be advertised until those vacancies are filled. Uh, the application form is available on the city website on the Boards and commis Commission's webpage. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Then I will make a motion to appoint Assistant City Manager Andrew Hackelman as the alternate to the Central Coast Community Energy Operations Board. I will second. Any further discussion? Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Council Member Aguilera Hernandez? Aye. Council Member Escobedo? Aye. Council Member Soto? Aye. Madam Mayor Pacino? Aye. Next, we have a public hearing. Madam Clerk, could you please read the title? The City Council will consider confirming the diagrams and assessment rates for the Northeast, Northwest, South Miller, South College Drive, and Southwest Landscape Maintenance Districts and their 19 Associated Special Benefit Zones for fiscal year 2023-2024. And staff report is to be made by Director of Recreation and Parks, Mr. Posada. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, thanks for having me back and uh, bringing you this year's uh, proposed assessment increases for the uh, landscape maintenance districts. So the City Council might know we have, uh, oh, thank you very much. We have four uh, major landscape districts uh, mentioned by the City Clerk. Within those four districts, there are 19 special benefit zones or areas that get a special benefit from the landscaping around the city. And the maintenance for these uh, uh, d districts are paid for through assessments to the property owners that reside within the districts. Special districts uh, give an opportunity for a new development as it occurs in Santa Maria to uh, participate. Uh, be part of a district and uh, their public landscaping or the landscaping and the public rights of way uh, are maintained in perpetuity. Um, tonight you're going to consider four resolutions that will uh, adopt the engineer's report that was presented to you at the last council meeting and uh, take any public comments regarding the uh, assessments before you move forward. I did want to touch quickly on uh, a couple of things. Um, <coughs> So we've been busy at work this past year working on updating uh, some of the uh, facilities around the city that are in the landscape district. Uh, Jim May Park, uh, gazebo and restrooms were recently uh, updated. Uh, that serves the Bradley Square oh, special benefit zone, very touchy. Uh, our district crews assisted in putting up all the uh, Christmas decorations along Broadway. Uh, we did some renovation. This is um, removing uh, turf areas from uh, parkways and uh, uh, setbacks along the Santa Maria levee and replacing it with, uh, with wood chips. This was in an effort to uh, conserve water, uh, part of the drought, which I'm not really sure where we are with that, but uh, 
Mr. Springer still likes to see these kind of pictures, so we're happy to present them. <laughs> um, we did some other upgrades around the area. Uh, Cherry Blossom up on the north end of town is also uh, the recipient of some upgrades in landscaping. Uh, the West Battles area uh, was, again, a water conservation project where we removed turf and replaced it with, uh, with uh, bark and uh, some larger uh, shrubberies. We did the Betaravia medians between uh, Miller Street and Broadway. Those hadn't been touched in probably 25 years, so there was some renovation work there, trying to have them blend in with the, uh, with the uh, medians in the uh, Enos Ranch project. South Blosser at Sonia, another example of some uh, removal of turf and putting in uh, shrubberies. Biscayne and Battles. This is a really trafficked area. Uh, council members might recall this is in the area of Enos, uh, a rattle of, of Enos uh, Ranch in the Bloss. Sorry, I'm drawing them all wrong. This is up by the Walmart Center. Uh, a lot of renovation was done there. A lot of foot traffic through there, so we went to some other uh, areas. Crossroad Basin was uh, impacted dramatically with the storms, uh, filled with uh, silt from the farmland on the east side of the freeway. It was all, well, many, much of it was deposited here at uh, Crossroads Basin. City crews went in and uh, have stockpiled it. Uh, we're working with Public Works to uh, put this in our FEMA projects to be reimbursed for the cost of uh, dealing with this uh, issue at that basin. Broadway medians north of, uh, North of Main Street, uh, that was a Caltrans project that uh, 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 I believe ran the median across Chapel Street, so there's no more right uh, or left turn into Chapel or left turn out of Chapel. So uh, we went through and completed the renovation uh, not too long ago. We worked on the Rifoni building, uh, home to Public Works Engineering and Community Development, uh, doing some outside landscaping and upgrading there. And then Bradley and Jones was another uh, project area that was tackled this past year, uh, stabilizing the slope that we have there. And last, the uh, project at Machado Plaza was also worked on uh, by our district crews, uh, improving the downtown uh, landscaping areas. So uh, the crews have been busy. Uh, we do contract out our regular landscape maintenance along the rights of way. And that contract is with the JD Human Company. Uh, they employ about 35 uh, Santa Maria residents uh, in maintaining the landscape district areas. Um, the landscape districts continue to be challenged. Uh, one of the things that uh, we hope that uh, converting turf to, uh, to bark and uh, shrubbery and changing the irrigation system from overhead spray to, uh, to drip irrigation will help us conserve water. Uh, water is our biggest expense, so we like to be sure to try to save money as much as possible for our, for our rate payers. One of the things that we uh, are doing now is we have uh, enlisted a firm to look at uh, options for us in the landscape districts, what's available to us to uh, keep the district program uh, uh, thriving. Uh, right now, uh, of the four districts, we have them, uh, we have three of the districts that are in pretty good financial shape. One of the districts, our older district, the South Miller South College, you know, has had some struggles over the years where we've done some extra work internally to, to make sure that that uh, doesn't become a, a bigger liability for us. Um, that really concludes my report. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them. Any questions? Mr. Pesetta? Yes, Mr. Escobedo. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just. Uh, do we have a, you mentioned there are four districts. Do we have a map where we can identify um, what district each of our household is that? Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty easy. So the uh, intersection of Stoll and uh, Broadway is the center point. So anything either way, north, east, north, northwest, southeast or southwest is from that center point at Stoll and, and Broadway. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Posada. Thank you. Madam Clerk, I'd like to open this up to a public hearing. Do we have any requests to speak or written correspondence? We do not. OK, 
Okay, I'll close the public hearing and bring this item back to the council. So do I have a motion to adopt the resolutions for assessment of the landscape districts and special benefit zones? So moved. Second. So I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Council Member Aguilar Hernandez? Aye. Council Member Escobedo? Aye. Council Member Soto? Aye. Madam Mayor Patino? Aye. The next item is a report by City Manager, Mr. Sowell. Sure, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. So the next meeting of the City Council is scheduled for August 1st. A few items of note there. Um, we propose bringing forward an agreement for law enforcement services with the schools. I know there's been a lot of discussion in the community about school resource officers, so we're proposing moving forward with that at this point. Um, also propose canceling the September 5th City Council meeting as it's the day after Labor Day. And at the following meeting, we'll likely consider um, canceling the September 19th Council meeting as um, the Council will be traveling to Sacramento for the annual League of Cities Conference. But I also want to note the on the August 1st meeting will be our first um, graduating class of the GROW initiative. That is an employee development program that the City of Santa Maria has partnered with UCSB for them to provide employee development um, opportunities for our, um, employees up here in Santa Maria. And it's been a cohort class and they've um, diligently met every Thursday for the past few weeks, have a capstone project. And so we wanna take the opportunity to both uh, recognize UCSB for their partnership with us and the good, the great work of the cohort class as um, to make it through our first cohort. We do have a second and third cohort planning in the, up the, in the upcoming. So we look forward to recognizing the employees who are going through that certificate program and the future employees who will be going through it. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Okay, we'll have oral reports of council members. Let's see. I can get started. Okay, well, I'm just gonna call on you, Ms. Soto. Okay, so, I good. saw you lying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, on, I'm so sorry, I thought I had it all organized. On Wednesday, June 21st, we had our, um, the airport district meeting here at City Hall. On Monday, July, June 26th, we had a meeting here at City Hall as well to discuss water and sewer stuff. And, and that is all I have. Ms. Hernandez. Yes, so on June 23rd, I uh, got invited to a local leader round table and I actually took a tour of uh, Diablo Canyon Power Plant. It was an all day event. Um, it was really uh, enlightening and just, you know, the knowledge that I was able to have to get about uh, their operations and really be inside that. Um, it, of course, required a um, background check and everything, but it was really worth it to go through that to be able to see it. On June 26, I attended the water and sewer rates briefing. On June 28th, I attended the traffic committee meeting. On June 29th, I attended the kickoff event for the fair and the foundation. June 29th, I met with Congressman Salud Carbajal to discuss some city issues. On July 11th, I went to the Santa Barbara County Fair pre-party. And on July 12th, I attended the downtown revitalization committee meeting. Thank you. Mr. Escobedo. Nothing to report, Madam Mayor. Okay, let's see. Um, June 21st, I have, I've attended the policy board of directors meeting for 3CE. On June 22nd, I went to Antelope Valley field trip with a group from the Elks. On June 23rd, I uh, did the Rick Blameyer show. On, on the 23rd of, 24th of June, I attended the Marion Residency Program graduation. And I don't know if everyone's aware that we have a residency program at our hospital and a huge, um, a huge OBGYN program. And they graduated eight students and six of them were women. So that, I thought that was great. And so we have more OBGYN 
uh, here in Santa Maria now. On June 28th, I attended the Project Opioid meeting in Buellton and the Marion Medical Regional Foundation board meeting. Um, on the 29th, I attended a luncheon at Merrill Gardens and spoke to a women's group, and I guess two men tried to come in and crash it, but they said, no, you can't come in. This is just for women. I attended a water policy meeting uh, at the chamber. Uh, July 1st, I attended the Livable California teleconference meeting, which I try to attend regularly, but it's on, it's on a Sunday afternoon. July, 20, July 6th, a Performing Arts Conference Center feasibility meeting. On July 8th, I attended the annual Pioneer Picnic. The 99th, they planned for 300 people and they wound up serving 500, so there was a big crowd. On July 9th, I went to the Elks Club for the Santa Maria Valley Sports History Club, and they had their exhibition out. July 10th, the PAC Steering Committee meeting for a Performing Arts Center. On July 11th, I attended the Legacy, Legacy Society luncheon at Marion Regional, and that evening, the Fair Park pre-party. On July 12th, I attended the North County Sub-Regional, which is held in um, Solvang. On the 13th, space, I went to the Space Launch 30, the change of command, so, so Lieutenant Colonel Long is gone, and we have a, a new commander, and I can't remember his name, and I'm sorry. Um, on the 14th, no, the 15th, uh, the Livable California Teleconference. On the 16th, I decided to go to the fair and check it out. Uh, checked out the showmanship. I love to see the fair, what the fair to me really is, the animals, the 4-H'ers and the FFA kids. On the um, 17th, I had a Fentanyl Town Hall meeting discussion, so we can have a town hall meeting. Probably we're gonna schedule it sometime in September, so all of you can be in attendance. And um, have met with the people from the Strawberry Commission meeting and met briefly with Greg, uh, Greg Hart, our assembly person. And I wanted to give some updates. We, on Sunday was concerts in the park at Rotary Centennial Park. And on the next one will be July 30th, Babylon Rockers at Rotary Centennial Park. August 6th, Soul Cool at Equistapache Park. August 13th, Cloud Ship at Rotary Centennial Park. August 20th, Dante Marsh and the Vibe Setters at Equestapache Park, and August 27th, Unfinished Business at Rotary Centennial Park. And that is it, this meeting is adjourned.